Right, hi people. Sorry about the late start. Hey Gary, good to see you in here. And um, welcome, people. Welcome to um the Sports Therapy Association podcast, episode 58. What an impressive big number. Um, I don't normally talk like this, it's because I've got a bit of man flu, and there may be times we hear me erupting to a sneeze. So I forgive, I forgive. No, I hope you forgive me already if you're listening to the podcast. I will try and edit it live you're going to get some terrible noises but just apologies in advance but yes you've joined us um for episode 58 um thank you very much if you're joining us live we do love it when you join us live you can do that by going to uh, the sports w association facebook page or you can join us by um watching on youtube you can join us there and in both of those live cases you can leave comments and questions and i can bring them on the screen like this there's Catherine. hi Catherine. how you doing um so you get a chance to network and and ask our guest questions face to face as it were as well um an extra special thank you if you're joining us tonight because someone's just told me there's some football going on apparently which i know nothing about um i i run i i run away from people i definitely don't run with people chasing a ball it's not my cup of tea at all but um if you have joined us then i know yes oh the other thing is if you listen to the podcast um there'll be pauses where people realize i've actually shaven about five inches of beard off i know thank you for noticing becky um so yeah i'd forgotten about that it's been about a week anyway right so people thank you very much for joining us um before we get started um what a great month um so july is with us now june was fantastic um, if you're not familiar with the Sports Therapy Association podcast, there's an amazing June there for you. We had Endometriosis Special with Deborah Thurlow Rowley. That was the first episode in June, which was just a total eye opener and another way which therapists, if they ask the right questions, can help somebody get diagnosed instead of waiting seven to 10 years and not getting diagnosed. So, again, asking the right questions. And that was all about, for example, letting women know that it's not normal to be doubled over with a super painful period. It's, even though the GPs might say that, um, it's not normal and you need to go and get checked out. Um, so yeah, it was an amazing episode. We then uh, had Chris Tiley on, uh, Never Too Old to Lift, which is a great um, episode all about um, helping 60 plus people um, do resistance training and not being scared to give them. I love recently on Chris Tiley, something he said on the podcast, but he could put a great photo out there, which was uh, like a, an elderly, elderly gentleman, I think it was, lifting a baby up. And then he had the same elderly gentleman lifting a 16K kettlebell up and going, how many of you would give this guy a 16K kettlebell? Well, guess how much the baby weighs. And it was just like an idea that we are scared of hurting elderly clients in clinic, although they're still lifting up their grandchildren. So why are we giving them little pencil weights instead of lifting, you know, heavy functional stuff? So that was amazing. I really enjoyed that. Um, and uh, we had Rob Bevan was fantastic from the Back Pain podcast, um, which I seriously, uh, he enjoyed it so much. He put it out on his own podcast. So thank you for that, uh, Rob. Uh, that was a great episode about misconceptions um about particularly lower back pain um all of these are available on, on podcasts on your favorite app or on youtube if you like watching the video and of course last week we had mike james from sports injury fix um talking about cbd the past and he's got a long past very old man mike james now but still going strong but yeah he talked about 20 years of cbd and his own experience and how it's changed um, and how sports injury fix has moved the times as well um, with uh, CIF CPD and um, I recommend you check them out obviously they had their event recently and um, by all accounts I was working but by all accounts um, it was a fantastic event really useful proper CPD stuff for you and your clinic as opposed to just learning another tool because you're scared of missing out and you want it on your card or something so really useful stuff um, I'm sure there's recording so make sure if you haven't seen that then you contact Sports Injury Fix we're a very approachable guy, guys there and they'll let you know all about it of what you've uh, missed um so if you do go and watch the podcast just again i say this every week it's so important to help us get the good way out there we have incredible guests amazing guests um but unless you share and unless you rate us in apple podcast then our podcast just kind of disappear so get us appearing in google just by leaving a nice rating and review particularly on apple podcasts um that'd be amazing it just helps us get the word out we make no money out of this it's just purely getting the good word out there and the good word of our guests Okay, talking of great guests, um, we've got another fantastic month lined up for you in July. Um, very shortly, we'll be talking to Tim Allardyce, creator of Rehab My Patient. It's going to be all about exercise prescription software, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, and already, whilst I'm babbling on, people who have joined us live, if you could write in the comments here, and don't you don't have to say Rehab My Patient. Um, Tim has got very broad shoulders, and he's fine. In fact, I want you to say what you've used, what you're currently using, what you've stopped using, whether you're using exercise prescription software for your clients, if you are, uh, what do you like about it, if you're not, why aren't you? 
um, and what are you using instead? Are you just kind of copying links to YouTube videos? Does that work for you? Have you ever thought about exercise prescription software or thought it was too expensive? All of this stuff we want to see in the comments because it will give us a true representation of, of therapists out there who have joined us live. Um, but obviously, Tim has spent a long time perfecting his particular product and is in a great position to tell us um, all about um, what you can get from exercise prescription software. And there might be a few surprises in terms of price um, and, and things which can make your life fantastically easier. Um, and then the rest of June, July, you can see there, we've got the amazing Dr. Deepak Ravindran next week as well, talking about his incredible book, The Pain-Free Mindset, which is definitely worth checking out. I worry about recommending books because I know that as soon as someone recommends a book who I like, then I'm, I've bought it on Amazon and suddenly I've just spent another 10, 20, 50, 30 quid. But uh, it is an amazing book um, and I, it's not too expensive to tell you the truth. And it's got so much in it if you're working with people with chronic pain. We've got Dr. Claire Minchell, who's back for a second appearance. We're doing a few more second appearances now. Um, most of you know Claire Minchell. She's been on the show before. Absolutely amazing strength and conditioning coach. Uh, get back to sport. Really looking forward to that. And then the last episode in July will be Mike Grice is taking over very kindly to host it again as I am going camping, I believe. I think that's what's in my diary uh, with the family and another family, another family. And um, depending on the weather, I might be back very quickly, but we'll see how it goes. So, yeah, Mike um, and Gary are going to be hosting, hopefully with a few um, sports, um, sorry, yeah, Sports Therapy Association members um, doing another industry Q&A. So I've already put a post out there. If you've got any questions which you want talked about, um, anything to do with the industry, then do that. Uh, email me, matt at the uk. Right, I'm just checking my guest for today. He's still there. He hasn't gone off. Just to, just to look at the football. Um, so, right. So without um, further ado, I think that's everything I need to talk about. We're going to bring up Tim Allardyce, uh, creator of Rehab My Patient. Hey, Tim. Hey, <laughs> how you doing? Same at the beginning of the month. Sorry about that. I'm talking. Uh, it's all now. good. He's totally bored out of his head now. Um, <laughs> thank you for your patience. And thank you for not watching the football tonight. I don't know whether... It's something which you kind of, have you got it on in the corner? Are you keeping your eyes no, open? Or? No, <clears throat> I'm waiting for the England game tomorrow. So I'll, I'll catch up on it, on the, um, on the Italy Spain game later. Is that what's happening tonight? I used to live in I Spain. I think so, yeah. I love it. Oh, it's actually, far more important to talk to the SDA than to <laughs> watch football. I think it is. I think it is. Um, but anyway, so I really appreciate your time. I'm really looking forward to what we talk about tonight. Um, oh, thanks for having me on, uh, and thanks you and Gary for, for, for you know for 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 for, um, for getting me on. I really, you know I think it's it's great, and you know we've had a really great relationship with SD over a number of years now. So it's um, it's been really good. It's true. No, it's, it was it was it's really cool. I mean, Gary um, mentioned to me and I was like, that's brilliant. It wasn't an idea I thought of. I'm always kind of proposing the importance of strength training and always proposing the importance of giving exercises which are relevant to your client and being able to regress and progress. But I've never thought about let's get an expert from exercise prescription software because if you haven't got decent software, if you're making little rubbish drawings, it doesn't matter how good you are, you're sending someone home with something they're not going to remember in two minutes. So it's amazing that you're here. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, and one, um, of the things, one of the things that we see is that adherence can be quite poor of exercises. So yes. it really helps with adherence to have something that really works. Exactly. And also, it's I think it's it's quite a healthy thing. As therapists, we're the ones who go, oh, they never do their exercises. Oh, it's terrible. He didn't do their exercises. And, and I've always fought for a long time saying, if they don't do their exercises, it's because of you. It's because you probably haven't given them that message. Or maybe, as we'll talk about later, you haven't record it in a way which they're going to remember or yeah you know. exactly right how did um whilst people are still as good a few people are writing here what they've used keep it coming people my regulars my people who aren't watching football i want to hear what you're using um in order to give your um, exercise to people are you doing stick men i mean if you're a good stick man drawer that's sometimes better than some classical really rubbish bit of software where you've got a choice of 10 photos where you can't see what's going on and you can't progress it or regress it so i've used stick men for a long time because the stuff i've seen i just thought i can't get this out it's just not showing what i want to show but um yeah so keep them coming but first so yeah tim how did you get into it how long has it been going and how did you get into it? Um, so it's been going about um, about nine nine or ten years. Um, and I first originally created um, the, the original software in 2005. Um, and it was because we were um, we used a, a software package back then. It was, there was only really one big software package called Physio Tools. So we were a subscriber and I just got so frustrated with it. And I just thought, we've got to do something a bit different. So we created our first product in 2005. 
Um, it was one of my patients um, um, up in town where I was working uh, and he built a basic version and my sister was the model and it was a complete fail. Um, and then I rebuilt it again in 2009, 2010. And, and that was really weird because back in those days you had to download software to run the software. But then, of course, the Internet took off and you could start running software online. Um, and once you could run software online, it opened up a whole world of possibilities to put software on the cloud uh, and, 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 and store information and assets online. So we rebuilt it in 2010, 2011, and then we built it again in 2015. Um, and then we've tweaked it uh, for the last few years. Um, and, um, and we've got a big update coming out soon. Fantastic. Brilliant. And if people aren't familiar with um, with your with this software, they can see examples of it online on your YouTube channel. If people want a visual. We were thinking about putting something on it tonight, but it's just going to be a technical failure. And that will just make me really stressed out and anxious. But if you want to see it in action, then it's on your YouTube channel. Yeah, there's some videos there. Yeah, yeah we could try it. We could try. No, I mean, no, no. Try share my screen. And no, 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 I can't, I can't, I couldn't handle that. I'm having to look at myself without a beard and that's already making yeah. me anxious. So, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. no, no, we've got to keep it very calm. And everyone in the comments is referring to my lack of facial hair. I know it's gone. My kids don't love me anymore. And my, my wife really loves me. What do I choose? My kids and my wife is so difficult. But anyway, yeah, so no, no, no. I've a, I love the idea. Maybe in a follow-up one where we have some time to practice. Yeah, but, fine. Yeah. Um, obviously, to perfect your bit of software, um, you've obviously invested time in, in listening to other therapists and what they need. And what have you found as some of the top priorities which have helped you kind of model rehab my patient? What is it most therapists tend to look for, which maybe they haven't found in other bits of software? Um, I think the key thing is something that's really super fast to use, right? Mm -hmm. Because we all end up being really, really busy, right? So you need something you can prescribe exercises in one minute. You know, and I think if I'm spending more than one minute on an exercise program, I feel like I'm spending too long because, you know, I only do half an hour slots with my, with my patients and my clients. Um, now, a lot of people actually, you know, so, some of the people that listen to this podcast might do 45 minutes or an hour. So you've got a bit more time. But, you know, you always want to give that bit extra to your clients or patients. You know, you, you want to give them as much sort of manual treatment or as much value to the session. So you don't want to sort of spend too long sort of going through exercises sometimes um, and so you need a software that works fast um, and that was one of our key objectives is to get something that was lightning fast um, and, and that was um, that's I, I think one of our real USPs um, it's just intuitive and it's you know it's it's clinician led it's physio led um, it's hi Brian how are you I've just your message just popped up Brian's a big supporter of ours he um he does some 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 training um, and and yeah, and he shows that all his students our, our software, which is brilliant. And um, you need something um, which which I think is is intuitive for clinicians, okay? Because a lot of these softwares are actually developed by um, IT guys, and they don't use it in the same way. And clinician logic and developer logic are two very different things, mm -hmm. and that's why I like it. That I, I'm a clinician and, and I lead uh, on this software. Go into that a little bit more. I like that idea because sometimes these things are invented by obviously people who have never set foot in a clinic and they yeah. think it's amazing. So give yeah. me some examples of where a clinician would see one reality and the developer has missed that. I, I mean, you know what, when I was building this repeatedly, you know, I had lots and lots of times when me and our developer were like, actually our developer our developer's not in the uk so I can't, we couldn't we couldn't throttle each other but i certainly wanted to <laughs> throw throw the computer screen out the window um and you know you just want to like you know it, good luckily it's attached with wires so it wouldn't have got very far out the window but i definitely wanted to throw out the window because you see a developer looks at things in a, in a very linear way um whereas a clinician has to be a much more creative with how they they prescribe exercises and so it has to be a very different process so developers hate guys like clinicians because they're just too they're too colorful and they like black and white and they like order and that doesn't work for clinicians so you've got to have something that really works for a clinician you know the way you pick an exercise the way you select it the way the exercise is ordered sometimes it doesn't feel right for a logical developer but it is right for a clinician Mm, great and um, we've got just a reminder here that um gary's um founder of the stas but just put a reminder here if you listen to the podcast you can't see what's on the screen uh but um a reminder that sta members get a free three months trial with um we have my patient the link is provided in the welcome letter in your drop dropbox folder we have got already in the room some people who i'm trying to look for people who don't use it because i don't want to sound too biased but let's just uh have a look at what people have put here um where is it becky carroll has said 
Um, I use Rehab My Patient, but add a fair amount of primal movement solution videos to the platform too. Um, we've got Sarah Humphreys has said, um, not currently using any exercise prescription software, although I've previously trialed RMP and Rehab Guru. What went wrong? How can you trial it and not get it? It's something I'm hoping to look back at in the next month or so now that I'm back at work. So I'm interested, Sarah. That's great. I'm really pleased. What did you, what, if you don't have to answer, but what is it you um, decided when you saw the trial? Was it, what was it, a money thing or was it, I don't think I'm going to get enough use out of it? I'm interested to know, Sarah, if you want to follow that with another comment. Um, Sherry or is it Sherry? I can't, I can never remember. CERI Moore says, I'm on a one month trial of Rehab Guru. So, how's that going? What do you like about it? Uh, I'm going to go with Sherry. Um, and then also, we had Catherine here says, um, I use Rehab My Patient. You can add your logo and your and the exercises have links to the YouTube, so it shows your clients how to do the exercises when they are on their own. Fantastic. And Scott Lines, I'll bring that up in a second. So, yeah, one of the things I'm really interested in is how um, customizable it is in terms of putting your own brand out there. Because I've been, when I was in a clinic with nine other people, we went through a couple of different types. This was a long time ago, by the way. We went through a couple of different types of exercise prescription software, and it always just looked like it was obvious it wasn't from yeah. you. It, was it just looked something. like it's someone else's yeah. software, right? Yeah. It was kind of better than using links, but it still just looked like, oh, you're using someone else's thing, you know? Um what yeah, about I mean, we have my patient i'm hearing you can put your really logo in and... yeah because you put you know you put a logo on it sends you the pdf it, it emails you it's got your logo on it's got your address on it's got your contact numbers i've got your email address on it and actually you know when when we see users haven't got a logo on we we often email them just to say you know have you got your logo on there especially when they sign up um so it's really important to us because we want people to we have my patient as as other exercise prescription softwares what they do is they actually promote your business because you're imagining let's say you see 10 clients or 100 clients or whatever you're sending out an exercise plan to each one yeah it's like a free advert that just walks out of your clinic and if you print them as well and actually hand them to somebody as they as they go out of your clinic and um, then it's it's a it's a free advert and they do go places you know you, people put them up my mum sticks hers on her kitchen uh, her kitchen um, cupboard door um, and uh, you know a lot of people put them up around the house and stuff like that so it's a, it's a free advert so it's super important that you get the branding right now a lot of people don't have logos so smart things that it can do they can take you know um, or, or use shutter stock or, or get um, get pictures of sort of massage you know hands on massage um, we had a new user today she's got a sort of picture of her, her hands on her body um, which looks like a stock image, which looks really, really good. People sometimes put spines on there uh, as a logo if you haven't got logo, or you just go to somewhere like Fiverr.com and and you know you can pay a very small amount of money and get a logo designed. You know you usually get three or four revisions. It'll cost you five to ten dollars, maybe more, twenty dollars sometimes, um, and you get a logo designed. And it's it's about branding you. Definitely. Yeah. Fiverr.com is worth mentioning them. I think yeah. it's not really supporting your local, but they're just brilliant, aren't they? <coughs> it's easy and quick, isn't it? I mean, you know, yeah. if you go down to your local print shop and find something, it's probably going to cost a few quid. You know, you can just do this online, you know, to get an idea of what you want and they'll send you back something and then you can get it revised and you've got a logo and it's pretty easy. Once you've got a logo, you build your brand, you know, you start to put it, you put it on, on your shirt or you, you, put, you put it on your shirt or you put it on your exercise software, you put it on your website and you start to build this brand and that's brand you that's brand your clinic send out this stuff to as many people as possible start emailing with your brand because you're promoting you and people like that and people will pass that on and they'll support you so it's a that's really really good, good marketing exercise as well and that's of course really it makes advice. your clinic look very very professional which and is it the doesn't thing. look it's, like we yeah. have my patient it looks like matt phillips clinic or Gary Benson's clinic, or I know Gary hasn't got a clinic, but you know he's far too busy running STA, um, or, or you know, or, or Vector clinic, or Velocity clinic, or or you know, whatever. It, it's your clinic, so it mm. makes it look like yours. It's definitely yeah. I like to think that sometimes getting the software is is going to be part of a moving up a little bit in terms of looking professional like you say if you're going to get the prescription software then this is where you can get your t-shirts get a new logo um yeah it's all part of moving up a little bit yeah um, i think yeah. these things you need you know you need this you need the stuff you, you know you, you need the website you need the, the, the software you know you need the logo you need 
the the image and the branding you know i i think this is super important and 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 you start to build this 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 sort of this this thing and no one really teaches this you don't learn about it very easily it's something you kind of pick up as you, as you go along let's talk a little bit about the important thing we'll get out of the way the money that's probably what scares some people off like but then again some yeah. people get scared off by seeing these flashy logos with kind of smoke disappearing and it was done for like a tenner or something online but what are people looking at in terms of yeah monthly investment or something to have um we have uh, my it's really stuff. affordable so as a single license um so we do a single license a clinic license and a multi-clinic license uh and and they get more affordable as you go up um um according to the size um so an individual license is is um with the sta discount is about 10 pounds i think 10 pounds 33 or 10 pounds 34 a month um and i think that's pretty good value i think we've got it about right um it's um it's affordable i mean let's say the average client probably pays 50 quid per session you know you're looking at 10 15 minutes of your of your clinical time will pay for it for a month um and um so it's pretty affordable but you'll get that back in the actual recommendations and and, and you know the, the the client satisfaction that you have from your from your patient list and your client list and um, so it, i feel it really does pay for itself um it's 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 you know these subscriptions do mount up a little bit if you've got a few i mean you know we, we do netflix and you know you might have netflix and we have a patient on your mobile phone but but they're really really useful and you tend to get quite good value out of these subscriptions so they tend to be a fairly affordable that's very good no it's it's def i'm hoping it surprised a few people because i always think that something like that when you look at the finished product when i look at the testimonials you've got on the page and there's an awful lot of them and people love hearing from other real therapists um yeah one of the common things is i didn't realize it, i thought it was gonna be a lot more expensive and also as you said the speed of use it just saves so much time during the day um which is another big factor as you've mentioned already um Right, um, another question. Just look at my little crib sheet here because I want to make sure I thought what I'm going to ask you. Oh, yeah, this is what I'm talking about customization. The other thing which has bugged me in the past, um, and I'm talking about probably eight years ago, so things have moved on since then, but as well as sending out a bit of paper, which obviously isn't from you, and it's probably just got someone else's Lego all over it. What about being able to customize exercises to suit the person that's in front of you? So there's a few things I'm thinking of here. Customizing the description. Because in the past, I've seen how to do the exercises very different, using a very different language than I want to put in for this particular client in front of me. Um, and also just modifying the exercise a bit. How, how customizable is it? Yeah, it's very customizable. I mean, you can definitely change the description. So um, so when you go to, you drag, you know, you click the exercise, it goes onto a sheet where you can put in your sets and reps and and a number of you know, times a day. And then you can edit the description. So you just start free typing it. Um, and the cool thing is you can then save that description for future use. So let's say you're really into, like, let's say breathing during a particular exercise, which we probably would put in there because it can be quite an individual thing. So you can put in there, you know, as you go up, take deep breath in and as you go down breathe out whatever you know you can customize it but then you can save that description for future so every time you then re-add the exercise you've got the description that you wanted um, and the actual image is di more difficult to actually customize so if you wanted your own image you could upload your own um your own exercises i mean like you know we've got a lot but we probably wouldn't have a a, a, a plyometric jump onto a box into a single mm. leg romanian deadlift it would be a mad exercise but there might be someone out there that wants to do it mm. and so they can add their own exercises um so it's it's uh, it's customizable it's very very quick and easy to add your own exercises and you can even add a, a link to a video a youtube link or a, a vimeo link or, a, or your own videos you can put your own videos onto google drive and can add it i mean you have got some therapists that use it that are really specialist but they just need a platform to prescribe their own exercises so they've got some you know a whole library of exercises that they've put on rehab my patient and we've had about 15 i think we've had about fifteen thousand exercises uploaded to rehab my patient there is a huge amount which i guess uh, is important people's own well. exercises yeah yeah customized exercises yeah massive library i mean i suppose that's what becky was saying so becky said before um i usually have my patient but i had a fair amount of primal movement primal movements. videos as well oh, cool. so you can yeah. mix things together yeah we've got quite a lot of prime movements and possibly not as many as becky wants but funny enough i love prime movements because i was originally did a lot of my rehab with paul check back mm -hmm. in 2002 2003 2004 2005 2006 so I read some quite a lot of his courses when he used to come to Eastbourne. Um, and it might be a few people here that are, are familiar with him and have been on his courses. His <laughs> rehabilitation was outstanding. Um, and he was massively into primal movement patterns. Mm. Um, so we've got the, all the classics, you know, we've got 
lunges and squats and and bends and and stuff like that um but actually you know um becky if we're missing stuff just let you know just just drop me a line we're shooting at the moment and we're shooting every week at the moment so um just drop me a line i'm really happy to to add more stuff and um um so if, uh, even you know if you want to share your share your your what you've already added we could we could um, replicate that that's great so it really is customizable in the sense if you want something added they just contact you and that's cool that's good it's evolving yeah. the whole time yeah we had, a, we had an nhs trust um email us um we, with about you know 200 exercises they wanted added from a from a book that they'd produced um and it took us like three days of shooting or four days of shooting to shoot all these exercises it was a real pain but we, we'll 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 do it. it we'll get there with it and um so yeah if there's enough demand for them yeah definitely um gary's just said actually um i'm hoping to get uh gaz lewis from primal on here too well there you go so um that'd be great as well we'll get that in the future um let me have a look there's quite a few questions going on down here if that's right with you scott what have you said here scott let's have a look i currently use rmp uh, we have my patient i love the ease of use and the interface etc but there's a but coming get ready here tim but for me here we go it's missing some essential snc um strength and conditioning and late stage rehab content looked at different pieces of software and liked the exercises on it but the interface was awful so i went back to rmp and then he plans to add in more strength and conditioning based exercises well there you go we kind of already had yes yeah, we've just we've just shot uh, <laughs> 830 so 874 i'd i'd just love to share my screen so i can show you some examples we've just shot 874 strength and conditioning exercises including plyos including cable machines um including trx um trx have very kindly allowed us to shoot a load of their exercises um so oh, wow. really good collaboration with trx <laughs> um we, uh, with machines gym machines um so we've got a whole massive now squat section a massive lunge section coming on board um and a medicine ball section and a kettlebell section um and olympic lifts are coming on um just scrolling through we've got plyometrics coming on um a whole load of sh a massive number of shoulder strength and conditioning stuff functional shoulder strength and conditioning and um, not to mention actually um we're also adding all of joe gibson's exercises to our to our database as well so joe's um bit uh, real, real shoulder guru and supporter um so yeah we've got quite a big strength and conditioning catch coming on a whole load of squats coming on um and um yeah so we've got that's coming on very very soon probably in the next um next six to eight weeks wow yep excited. trx is coming becky yep yep excellent all coming yeah so i'm really excited i'm re i mean really excited you know our database is is is, is great gonna go go you know quite a lot bigger fantastic that's, that's amazing so there you go scott sounds like yeah just about 1200 coming in a couple of weeks there you go um what about covid does that had a an effect on the actual service you deliver or the software the the different facilities in the software has it played much of a change yeah um so covid i mean first of all has really been a big game changer for everybody um it's been really really um it's been a really dr dreadful thing to go through um, and I think that you guys, um, STA members and, and, and others got hit very, very, very badly. Um, it's been a massive challenge, but, um, rehab my patient was, was, we, we were quite lucky, I guess, because a lot of people turned to exercise prescription software and online software. Um, we've got a tele rehab function, which is free. So you can use tele rehab and have online calls with your, with your, with your, um, with your, with your, with your, with your, with your, your, your users and clients. Um, so you can do exercise with them online. Um, and for me, you know, I, I remember I had a patient, I just had a hip, um, arthroscopy, um, just before COVID hit and, um, and then COVID hit and we were locked down. Um, and I did my first session online with her every single session and my last session online with her. And she, we went through the whole rehabilitation of her hip online on video using tele rehab um and it was brilliant um so it's possible it's not easy it's very foreign to people but it's a solution if the excuse me language shit hits the fan you know and you need to get some income in you can still do pilates classes online you can still do yeah support online it's not great it's not what you used to but it's something
That's great. Yeah. Uh, for people who are listening to the podcast and um, you can't see what's on the screen, but I just put up a screenshot, put it up again. Um, the rehabmypatient.com, there's a load of great information on there. I um, mean, it does talk about the tele, uh, have, uh, online video consultation, which we've talked about a lot on the show about how much that can still be used because there's still a lot of people who don't want to. Oh, in the college I teach at, they're dropping like flies. It's just so many people are still getting COVID 19 again, having to isolate. It's people aren't dying but everyone seems to be getting it so i don't know how that's going but i think online consultation still plays a very big part for me personally all my gate analysis i'm seeing somebody first to have that consultation because i don't need to be face to face and to talk to them so i do that 45 minutes and then we meet up to do the gate analysis it's still a big thing and also on there as well i just want to because i don't i don't want to forget to mention it there's so much information there in terms of the blogs some lovely articles there going through you can't see again if you listen to podcasts but you can see on the screen on the youtube video um there's fantastic blogs about different muscles um and huge there's all categories there it's a really great website uh, I'm not saying that just because Tim's here, but it's really nice, really nicely laid out for students of anatomy and that sort of thing. Yeah. So, And we've also got 470 advice sheets as well. And Amazing. a lot of people sometimes struggle with, you know, patients come in and, and they say, I've got a spondylolisthesis, or I've got a uh, cubital tunnel syndrome or something, you know, and, and you just think, oh my goodness, what is that? You know, I can't remember what it is. So we've got an MSK advice sheet. So you kind of, search for it then you just send it to them as an exercise plan it's really cool brilliant fantastic yeah. right let's look at a few more questions um i'm just going to notice that my computer's come out so let's plug that in let's scroll down and um, get some more questions from people here so i saw one from brian here um oh yeah we had sif on the show mike james um last week i'm sure you've you've met and talked to via therapy expert and that have you got any plans to sync your software with sif yeah, we really hope to. So we've had a few chats with SIF and um, I think they've made some updates with our API recently. Um, and um, so we've got the, our APIs available and then SIF can, their APIs can talk to our APIs. And um, so um, I think I'm very positive about the relationship and I think that could really, really work. Um, so I'm hopeful that we'll connect our APIs together and then they'll both talk to each other. Um, and you, you know we we like SIF and I think it's it's a good software and um, and I think the, the collaboration would work really really well. Fantastic! I have seen when I again I was looking through the comments and things. You do kind of sync with other types of CRS that people might be using. Um, what other things might people might be using in clinic that you that you already sync with? Um, so we sync with um, I, I we sync with um, PPS private practice software Physio Diary um, Plato, <laughs> Clinico um, oh yeah I saw that yeah. Clinico um, yeah. um, and um, and a couple of others um, but uh, we we we're quite keen to, to to work with others so if there's any providers on here listening that want to work together you know we're really open to like collaborations and stuff and fantastic it sounds like yeah it's a really nice evolving bit of software and, and changes when people say we need stuff so a bit like yeah. Sif, really that was, that was one of mike's big questions last week is we're evolving and changing because change needs change so what our, our service has to change as well yeah uh, yeah. Becky's made a comment here. My clients particularly like the diary attached to their OMP plan. I would say it's this so definitely cool, helps isn't it? exercise adherence. It is so cool. that. It's so simple. I mean, we do tracking now as well, so you can track the exercises, but you know what? Like the diary just works so well. It's just a paper diary. You just print out a sheet and it's it just automatically prints. You just click a button and it just prints this diary at the end of your exercise plan. Um, a lot of people just keep, keep it on tick and default and it just sticks a paper diary at the end of each exercise plan. You just get your, you, I print them out. You just get people to, to tick when they've done their exercises and it really helps just engage, you know, engage people into doing their, their exercises. You know, we talked about adherence earlier and, you know, there's certain things I think that uh, make a big difference when it comes to adherence. I do quite a lot of training. I do a few re rehab, um, rehab um, seminars and, and I, I do a lot of onboarding with new staff. And one of the things that, and, and, and students, well, we've taken on 40 students this year um, and we've supported them on, on six week placements. And one of the things I always talk to them about is adherence to exercises because it's a big factor. You know, we know that, that adherence can be quite low, sometimes as low as 30% of people only 30% do their exercises. So how can we improve the adherence? And 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 that's where these sort of softwares are really important. And I've, I've identified sort of three main factors that I think help improve adherence. And that's keeping your exercises simple, keeping your exercises low volume. So they reckon after two exercises, 
prescribed on a sheet, the, the adherence goes down. So, you know, to these therapists that prescribe 25, 30 exercises, you know, typically people don't really do them. Um, so keeping a low, a low number and then printing your exercise plans and print them out with a diary is super good. So you just print them and then people, are, I think, are more likely to do them. Brilliant. Yeah, it's a big topic of adherence. We'll probably talk about it with with Claire Mitchell when she comes up in a couple of weeks uh, time. And also yep. she talks about how, yeah, the, just the low volume. It's so important. We do tend to just add new exercises on the amount of times clients just say, am I supposed to still be doing everything? And yeah. now, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's right. And, and that's the thing. What you want to do is get into a situation where you can really easily edit it each week. So they come back next week or the week after or the week after and you edit it and then you remove one of these ones and you put slightly harder one. So you start to progress them um, and, and you start making the exercise a little bit more challenging. You start to test them, start to stretch them a little bit more, strengthen a bit more. And that's how you quickly edit and just drag and drop new exercises. Super, super quick. Fantastic. Brilliant stuff. Um, Sarah's come back with an answer to why she at the time didn't uh, pursue with some software. And it's an interesting one. I think she admits that she was looking for something that um, doesn't exist, but she was, says she was looking for something that hoped to find a system that did all of my bookings, forms, note keeping and exercise prescription in one. But I have to face the fact that I'm never going to find that. I'm now back to finding the best individual systems for my needs. It's been so long I can't actually remember specific pros and cons of RMP. Yeah. yeah i think i mean you can do, I, I mean if you want one that does it properly i think you need to really just go to to individuals because they're both quite big projects mm. um alone so they tend to be standalone um and i think that um, it, and, and this is where you know you integrate with another package like like sif or someone like that what about sometimes i guess when when you talk to therapists who contact you and say, oh, I'm interested in exercise prescription software, blah, 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 do you find that there's some facilities or things which they don't even realize would help them that you come up with and say, have you ever considered this? Um, or is it a case that they know exactly what they want and that's what you need to kind of deliver? Most people know what they want. Mm. Sometimes they just email us and go, actually, can you add that? And sometimes we go, wow, that's a really good idea. Let's add it. Uh, and then sometimes they ask for stuff and we're like, that the well, i'm not sure we, we would really add that because it would it might be confusing for other people or it might disrupt the flow or intuition of the software uh, but most people find they log in and they just kind of get it because it's really really intuitive like it just kind of works um, and that's i guess the benefit of me rebuilding the site like four times now is i've gone through four versions that didn't really work as well as i wanted it to um and <coughs> our team had to use it every day so we had to get something that worked well uh, which we now have got and that's why i was so nervous for ages in promoting the product um i was really um and i've always not i'm not, I'm not a good marketer um i'm not a good salesperson but i i've now got the confidence in the product so it's easier after nine years yeah first, <laughs> first five years i just didn't want to promote it i didn't want to tell anybody about it because i just I, I was so worried about what people would think and people's opinions and uh, and um and 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 people not liking it and i was really nervous about it and it's probably just a bit of a confidence thing um but now i sort of feel like you know it's proven it's a proven model and it, it works and people like it. we've had some amazing testimonials and we get amazing feedback every day on it so cool. um it, we know it works and people really like it and you know even just looking at some of the comments here it's been really cool so um no, that's lovely it sounds great i mean i love i love people who um lack confidence i think it's a lovely trait to have um but then they create something where finally they turn and go actually this is pretty good it's a lovely turning thing and um, it's good we've yeah, got some um, comeback um sarah's I, just said someone once exercises. said to me i was quite an entrepreneur and i never look at myself as an entrepreneur but i do look at myself as a bit of an intrapreneur so I'm I'm sort of tend to I tend to not get too involved uh, in the front end stuff. I tend to stick stick behind the scenes a bit. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, Sarah's come back and said um, these exercises sound amazing. Extra exercises. I definitely have to another look yeah, at this. Yeah, you love again. it, Sarah. You'll love it. It'll be so good. Um, Scott has said, "Well, that just sounds awesome." To be fair, <laughs> I love the way Scott talked. That sounds awesome. To be fair, um, good work. Yeah, it's exciting. It sounds like you've got some amazing stuff coming along. And then Michael's is here as well. Hi, Mike. I did see you earlier on. Sorry, hi, Mike. Uh, Mike James, our guest from last week um, from Sports Injury Fix, um, says our team are getting ready. I was going to do it in a Welsh accent. I won't. Our team are getting ready as we speak to integrate, hoping we can be ready in the coming weeks. That sounds great as well. Um, what's he put here? 
also mike has come out with some nice research stuff here uh, meeks medina et al 2016 showed adherence to six exercises is less than 50 yeah. percent compared to giving one to three there we go yeah good study um fantastic um let me have another little look at my uh crib here so i don't forget other things i wanted to talk to um i've talked about the logo the instructions being changed um support i mean we had balen's and um, david balen um was here from balen's insurance and, yeah and he was talking about how like even though he's got like 80 people across the country the number of calls they get and um, people think that you, there's always gonna be someone at the end of the phone but it just doesn't happen that way what's it like do people have over expectations in terms of support or are you able to kind of manage it quite well if people if something's gone crashed what's the response time like um it's really really good i mean the thing is is about about support is we're really really lucky because we've because the product is quite straightforward to use we don't get that many questions <laughs> good which answer is really really good so uh, my inbox is not getting hammered um considering we've got a big user base you know i'm really really lucky but we've got a very small team you know we, we don't have a big team so if we're off shooting exercises we, we can't pick up the phone um and you know it's it's um but we do respond almost always within you know within a few hours in most cases occasionally 24 hours or longer but in almost all cases we'll respond within a few hours and email is definitely best um and um, it, i mean you know if, if there's something major going wrong we'll, we'll, we'll have picked it up within you know within minutes um so uh, we've got all sorts of alert systems in place of things to go majorly wrong and and if occasionally you know servers do drop um and and then things like that but they're, they're fortunately very rare um thanks brian he says response to emails are top draw there yeah I, mean, I think it's it's pretty good so um but but yeah i mean we're a small team so we, we don't have you know dedicated team of, of i i mean it's very small right you know it's it's um it this is very much a clinician red led project um it's it's not a you know there are softwares out there that have had you know upwards of three and a half million us dollars invested in them um you know we this is not our product this is not a route we want to go we want it to be clinician based um and, and to have our own path um so we don't have the big the big backups but we always get back to people um super quick fantastic well again so it's kind of says in the testimonials i just know that sometimes again other not naming any names but other kind of son software one of the worst things is things go wrong and then you're on the phone to ireland or somewhere and it's just not happening and you just get waiting waiting i mean you've got people queuing up so it's a really important thing i remember i mean I think people don't even realize as well how how long it takes even when you perfect it to make these videos i know a long time ago i started about six seven years ago i thought i'm gonna just make my own videos and we got a big white sheet behind and everything and my brother and me were in the studio in the clinic patients are coming and going out we had to wait until it was quiet and he's with the tripod on the phone try not to tear the papers we're doing lunges and exercises it takes an awful awful lot of time um to perfect these things with cars going by it's it's hard but um Yes, people don't realise when you get such a polished result, it takes a lot of time and effort to get it done, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, you know, just the amount of time we've put into rehabilitation, it's thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of hours. I mean, it's thousands of hours of, you know, even now, it's still like 1am, 2am finishes sometimes, you know, and it's it's thousands of hours of work goes into this stuff. And it doesn't look, it doesn't even look that complicated, but there's so no, many facets really to it. Is there. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I can appreciate it. I really do. Um, Gary here says he hope he's not letting the cat out of the bag. This is exciting. Gary says, I hope I'm not letting the cat out of the bag too early, but we are planning some collaboration with Tim live from the Tokyo Olympics. Has he let the cat out of the bag or do you want to edit this from the podcast? <laughs> no, that's fine. No, it's great. Yeah. I mean, um, I was, you know, I was hoping to come on live from Tokyo and do, a, do another podcast with you guys if possible. Uh, if Amazing. Sure. Um, and um, yeah. If, and, if, you know, I just thought it would be such a cool thing to do. And um, so I'm very, very, very honored and lucky to be going out with um, to the Olympics with the Tonga team. So I'm the um, the team physio for Tonga. Um We've got about, I think I looked at the team shot. I think there was five or six athletes. I think five athletes um, who, who I'm looking after in, to uh, in in Tokyo. It's going to be a very different Olympics this year. Um, and um, 
it's uh but it should be a, a pretty good experience so i'm leaving into to, uh, on the 19th of july so in a couple of mondays i'm leaving and it'd be really great to uh to catch up and to do something from out there that'd be amazing how did you end up with the tongan team um just like all of these things it just ends up being in the right place at the right time it's so lucky um but about uh, about three years ago um one of my one of my patients actually had a link to one of the members of the team um and um and so i managed to get out to pyeongchang with 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 tonga um and um and because i went out there and and it went really well and then they asked if i'd go out to to take it with them so um of course i was uh i i couldn't quite hold my excitement and accepted uh within about two seconds of receiving the email to say could i come out to tokyo um and then of course you don't hear anything for months and you think it's all nothing's happened um and then you get a random email you know asking what what size is your waist so we can get you a tongan skirt um you know one of these um straw skirts and a, and a tonga blazer but yes yeah, so it's all happening um it's uh, touch wood all being well and um, bar a major catastrophe or a covid situation so hopefully it will go ahead of course yeah that'd be amazing we, we hope that works that'd be great life in tokyo yeah, yeah it's going to be very different so i was on a medical conference call with um the um organizing committee two weeks ago and they're going to pretty much bubble everybody so we've been told you know no public transport and no unnecessary leaving the village Eleven thousand athletes will be tested daily um under supervision um they're gonna i think they're gonna try and restrict everybody so i think they'll disallow going to to shops and sightseeing and 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 restaurants and bars and things okay well i've got a fingers we'll crossed see. so it's um nine minutes two i'm interested in obviously you obviously you've got your product and you you're you're um rightfully so very proud of it but to finish up i'm interested <laughs> in providing um therapists who are thinking of getting some software and obviously we recommend people look around and you're proud enough of your product to realize that if people do look around and you know chances are they're going to realize we're the best but what are some things that people should look out for what are some pitfalls maybe that therapists need to keep an eye out for if they where they could maybe make the wrong decision when it comes to paying out for exercise prescription software is there anything which you would advise um no i I've, i mean there's lots of different products out there there's probably 30 or 40 different products um and so there's lots of choice um and it's just i would say just get a feel for what feels right for you guys you know what feels intuitive what feels fast what feels right um different things different products have different benefits and negatives um ours is not a complete package there's stuff we'd like to do to develop it more which we will do you know it's constant development progress it's just been constant development right from the start and even now we're adding 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 making new developments we've got a new team on board as well who are taking rehab my patient to another level um so i i think you just try it and see what you think um and and the pitfalls i mean you know just i i guess um I mean, yeah, I mean, you you just, I think you'll know when you go on our website with the quality of a site, you know, you see the quality of the videos and the pictures is key because sometimes you don't look so detailed as, a, you know, look at it as if you're the patient, make your exercise plans for you as the patient or client. And so prescribe to yourself and then go through the process. You can see the, the videos, which are really good, you know, and, and look at the quality of the pictures and the line arts. You can switch between photos and line arts, for example, you know, because you might have a black and white printer, you might want to, printing lineup because you used to join stickmen so then we have a stickman version you know so um so yeah just get a feel for it and and trust your instincts brilliant and you do offer a, a month is it a month trial or something uh, yeah, 14 day trial oh no sorry days. sta members get a three month three month oh, trial brilliant. okay so yeah so if... sta get three months with with stas uh sta so yeah just um register <coughs> so if you register go to rehabmypatient.com forward slash sta Fantastic. And if people listening to this who aren't STA members, which we always welcome, obviously, then um, you don't get the full month, but you do get um, 14 days, you say, yeah? Yeah. Fantastic. Then STA and again, get, get, uh, get three months and then everyone else gets 14 days. Fantastic. So um, the website, again, if you're listening to the podcast, is rehabmypatient, or one word, dot com, and you'll see links in there to get a 14-day trial. And you can, and like I say, just have a whole look around the website, and I'm sure you'll get a good feel of um yeah the quality in there it's, it's quite evident when you go and have a little look yeah brilliant and um it, it, um i was thinking maybe we could just um offer like one of the someone that's maybe posted today a, a free year's license maybe not a not a not a paid subscriber because we, we tend to 
um but maybe someone that hasn't actually got a subscription or something maybe we could offer someone a, a license today or uh, how would you feel about that matt oh well gary's probably rubbing his hands thinking how lovely he loves gary loves giving stuff away he'd be amazed gary loves it yeah so uh, um, yeah amazing. if you want to pick someone you're gary generous. later um then um you know, you could definitely, gary. Um, definitely i think there's one condition though uh, gary's already mentioned will you wear the grass skirt for the live link ups ah uh, maybe maybe <laughs> we can see we can see <laughs> Fantastic. Right. Um, we'll finish off. There's a comment here from Alistair Cunningham. Alistair, you're going to have the last comment on here, which is fantastic. I unfortunately don't use RMP as I went with another provider from a recommendation from a colleague, but I've been very impressed at what RMP platform has got on offer um, and um, also what is in progress at the moment. The price sounds incredible for RMP and tempting to consider a change. Using software like this has been a game changer for my practice. The patient's Patients all say, oh, right, okay, I won't go into the grammatical error there. The patients all say how professional it is. I would recommend any SD member who hasn't given the free trial a go, then sign up, nothing to lose. Very nice. Well, thank you for that. That's a nice recommendation from you, Alistair. Um, and if we have given you reason to have a little look at maybe changing, then fantastic. Um, Gary says, I'm on it with regard to that very kind offer, Tim, so thank you for that. Brilliant. <laughs> this is why gary has no free time at all as soon as he thinks yeah. i'm gonna sit back and watch the football later on or not emails yeah. out yeah becky says that's lovely. right um fantastic right well i know we're going to finish um on time because i know there's a second half for you to watch um so uh obviously you got yeah i would normally ask people now have you got anything exciting coming up and you definitely have um in terms of your own journey and also yeah this release so you said a couple of weeks and then all these exercises and things you've talked about were on the system yeah uh, yeah, it's going to be a little bit longer, but they've been shot. So we've done the 874 videos. Um, mm. We're actually going to get to a f over a thousand videos. We look about a thousand and fifty strength and conditioning. Nice. So we've got the last last few shoots to come, <coughs> um, and then they've all got to be processed. It takes a bit of time to process the videos and the uh, the photos and the, the the pictures. We draw pictures for each exercise, so that's going to take a little bit of time. Um, but um, but it, it'll be in the next few weeks for sure. You know, it'll be. I suspect by you know, six, six or eight weeks, I think. Fantastic. And if people want to follow you, um, are you quite active on any particular social media or? Um, not massively, but no. at, at Tim Allardyce on Twitter. Um, I'm not on Instagram, uh, although Rehab My Patient is on Instagram. So mm. at Rehab My Patient on Instagram is great. Um, at Tim Allardyce on Twitter is great um i'm i'm i occasionally tweet um but i'm so i've part I, I was past the social media guru stage uh so i was <coughs> not so um not so social media minded but um yeah we're on linkedin and 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 facebook as well um mm. so our facebook page brilliant it's got ten thousand likes so it's facebook.com forward slash we have my patient um and um and you can probably find links through the sta as well um so yeah massive thanks matt and gary again for, for for having me on it's been really great and really really great and i hope to do it again with you guys fantastic thanks for giving us your time and thank you brian for caring about me i will get some limb sip i've been muting myself today people listening to the podcast won't realize but i've been muting myself and blowing my nose and every time i blow my nose my microphone goes you actually you trying to speak you're muted i'm like no I, i'm unmuted for that very reason but yes thank you brian for caring it's very kind of you right that's it people so um 8:57. just a reminder um we've got um next week a fantastic guest you might not be aware of this gentleman um, but the book which he released quite recently, um, The Pain-Free Mindset, is phenomenal. It's being highly respected. Remember, we had um, uh, lots of people we've had on the show talking about pain. Um, and this one is is on the top of their reading list at the moment. So The Pain-Free Mindset by Dr. Deepak Ravindran. Um, he's going to be talking about that, um, all about uh, working with patients in chronic pain or persistent pain. But for tonight um thanks very much for joining us as always apologies for my blocked up nose but hopefully the um, experience and advice that tim's given will hide that tim thanks again thanks so much and take um care. well next Have time we meet week. maybe from tokyo that'd be brilliant take care